Hey everyone, it's Tango Oscar Mike, and I wanted to talk about digital modes today and getting connected with your computer. Um, there's several ways to get this accomplished. You can use a Windows computer and load all the programs individually and do that configuration, um, which I've done. I, I was using a Raspberry Pi for a long time, and then there were a few things that I couldn't do on a Raspberry Pi that I wanted to do on a computer, so I started using Windows. Um, but recently, I started doing something else uh, with a Raspberry Pi that I think is really simple to use and I'm really enjoying using the Raspberry Pi again and I'll kind of explain why uh, coming up here. So the first way that I've always been using the Raspberry Pi for the longest time was with KM4ACK's build a Pi script. Now this is a, a script that he has out on GitHub. You image your Raspberry Pi, you run a command that downloads and runs the script it comes up and asks you for some information, and then it asks you what programs you want to install. And there's a lot of options that you can pick and choose from there to install. But if you don't know what you're doing, um, you, you wouldn't even know which programs to pick to install. Um, and once you're done installing all the software, you have to go in and configure each one of those programs with your information to make it do what you want it to do. And and that can be time consuming. And, and uh, if you're not familiar with Linux and you're not familiar with these digital programs, um, it could cause a lot of frustration is what I'm saying. So, but it's excellent if you're a little bit more advanced and you've already run things like WSJTX and JS8 call and FL Digi and some of these other modes, you will have no trouble with it. And the KM4 ACK uh, Pi, uh, build a Pi, is a lot more powerful than uh, than other builds. But what I, I want to kind of focus on today is DigiPy. And DigiPy is a project by KM6LYW. Uh, it's an image that you download and install to your Raspberry Pi, and then it's pretty much set. Um, you download it, install it, and it's good to go. Um, now, to do digital modes, you have to have a radio, obviously, and then you have to have some type of sound card interface with your radio. Some radios have that sound card built in, like the ICOM 705, which is what I have, the 7300, the FT991, and even newer radios. I think most of them do come with sound cards built in these days. Um, but older radios, like the 817, the at Yesu FT817-818, um, the Yesu uh, FT857, those radios don't have sound cards in them, uh, and you have to have a, another device to connect to those radios. Um, there are different devices out on the market. Yesu makes a device for their radios. You can also use a signal link. Uh, you can also use a rig blaster. But the new thing that's out there is called a DigiRig. And the DigiRig is much smaller, it's cheaper than any of those other options, and it works with a lot of radios. Uh, so if your radio doesn't have a built-in sound card, you will need something like that, but you'll have to look into getting into digital modes for whatever radio you have. But once you have that sound card, um, then you can connect to your Raspberry Pi and you know start using things. So. Um, Craig KM6LYW has a great YouTube channel and goes over a lot of the features of the DigiPi, but I want to go into it a little bit uh, and just talk about why I think the DigiPi is such a great image for the Raspberry Pi. And this is the DigiPi. So I installed the image on my Raspberry Pi, I booted it up, it creates a Wi Fi hotspot. Uh, with uh, which you connect to with your phone or your computer. It's called DigiPi. You connect to that and then you can configure your own Wi-Fi, which I've already done. Um, there's a button here. You click this, it comes up and says enter your Wi-Fi information, um, which I've already done. So my this DigiPi is actually connected to my home network right now so I can access it and show you this the screen captures here. Uh, once that's accomplished, uh, you'll see this option here for initialize. And you do need to go in and do this, but unlike a lot of other programs and stuff, there's there's not a lot of information you have to enter in here. Um, 
you have to enter in your call sign, your WinLink password. If you don't have one, you can get one created. Uh, your APRS password, if you don't have one, you can click here and you can go out and uh, it'll generate one. Your grid square, your lag uh, latitude and longitude, your X25 node pass. Again, that is something that you can create on your own. You just make up whatever you want and put that in there. Uh, you can enable FL rig if you want to. I don't. Um, and uh, large display, which I don't have. Now down here is for configuring your rig. Uh, by default, Craig has this set up for the ICOM 705. Um, but there are, if you want to see other radios, you just click on rig list and it's going to bring up the list. And basically you'll go through, find your radio on this list and pick that number. Um, for example, here's the uh, Yesu FT897. Here's the 817. Uh, its number is 1020. So back on the configuration screen, you would put in 1020 and then whatever the default baud rate is for that radio. I think it's 9600 if I'm not mistaken, but uh, look that up and enter that information. And then you click initialize and the DigiPi uh, is basically set up uh, for the most part. Um, I've already done one. I already have one running with my information on it. Um, so this is all configured for me. It normally comes up defaulted with the TNC APRS gate installed. All I had to do to actually make this run is turn on my radio, uh, switch to two meters, and uh, here in the US, the frequency is 144.390 and I started receiving digital packets, which uh, was pretty cool. Uh, one thing with the DigiPi build, um, Craig uh, has a bill of materials. Uh, he does recommend the Raspberry Pi 02W. It's fast enough to run these programs and it's super small. Uh, unfortunately, you're not gonna be able to find much of any Raspberry Pis right now, or you're gonna pay um, some price gouging prices. Uh, they do expect uh, supplies to start coming back the third quarter of this year. But if you have an old Raspberry Pi sitting around, uh, this is an excellent use of it. Um, one of the optional things that I, I highly recommend is this, and this is this optional Adafruit 1.3 screen. And what that does is that gives you, um, it shows you on the Raspberry Pi, it attaches right to the top of the Raspberry Pi and shows you uh, just some important information. If you're using the TNC, it'll come up and show you the call signs of APRS signals that you've received, which is pretty cool. Um, it'll also tell you when it's shutting down. It'll tell you uh, if you click one of the buttons, there's two buttons on the screen. You can click one of the buttons and it will tell you what the IP address is of the device. So if you don't know what the IP address is of your Raspberry Pi the first time it boots up or whatever, you click the button and it actually will tell you what the IP address is. Uh, if you're out in the field, it'll show you the Wi-Fi uh, uh, IP address of the hotspot that it created. Um, so it's very useful in that way. It'll also tell you what mode it's in. It'll say like JSA call or FL digi on the screen to show you what mode it's currently running at. So um, I think that's great. Uh, it To me, it's just added that nice little feature to the radio. And even if you don't want to run DigiPi, you can run that little screen and it will display the operating system, some statistics like the uh, IP address, the CPU temperature, um, that kind of stuff, uh, memory, how much memory is in use, etc. Uh, so those screens have actually come really handy. Um, if you don't have a case, you can 3D print a case. Um, I couldn't find one, so I've created a 3D printed case for the Raspberry Pi 4 uh, that allows for the screen. And I'm actually working on one for the Raspberry Pi 3 right now. You might hear the printer uh, printing. I created a little uh, prototype um, and it wasn't quite lined up properly. So I'm printing another one uh, to try to get it right before I release those, those files. But once it's set up um, and you have this, this working, uh, to do anything in, in the DigiPi is really simple. 
Uh, Pat Winlink then would already be set up. All I have to do is click on Pat Winlink Client. It's going to start the things that I need to start. So it's going to start the rig control daemon. and it's going to start the Pat Winlink Client. Client. Now, if uh, Pat Winlink, the default communication protocol these days is RDOP modem, um, so I can start the RDOP modem as well. And once those have started, then I can just go down here and follow the link for Pat Winlink and. Pat Winlink is running. You can see it got the rig control information. It says the radio is ready and it says the dial frequency is 7078 because I was doing JSA call before this. Um, but it works great. Well, look here, ADM 6Ms uh, online. So it it's very simple to use. Winlink, uh, again, you can see it. I didn't have to do any configuration. It already has my call sign in there because I'm already previously connected. Uh, you go to actions, you can compose an email, you can send a position report, and connect is how you send or receive those emails. Uh, it, there's already some aliases in here. You can pick the band, like these are 20 meters, 40 meters. Um, these are the R dot modes, there's 10, 20. He already has some of these in here. So what I do is I just go in and try to find the one closest to me. Um, there's a couple in here that I use on a regular basis and uh, I can connect to those and send and receive email. If you scroll to the bottom, you can do Telnet too. Um, if you have an internet connection, this is a good way just to make sure that your WinLink password and everything is working properly. Um, but it's as simple as that. And I, if I click connect, you'll see down here at the bottom of the screen, it connected, checked, and uh, disconnected. I don't have any email, so it didn't do anything. Um, you have an outbox, an inbox, sent, archive, just like everything else. Uh, it's super simple to use. And when I'm done using it, I close it and I can go out here and turn these off. Now, if you pick another mode, it automatically turns these off and I'll show you. Um, like RDOP modem is still running, but if I go to JS8 call, it'll stop the RDOP modem, I believe, and it will start JS8 call and you'll see that change here on the screen, yeah. So then JS8 call is running. Again, I click JS8 call and it takes me into the program, into a web browser. So you don't need to configure VNC or anything like that. It makes it super simple and easy to use. And um, yeah, there's really not that much to it. If I wanted to change frequencies, it's just changed my radio. It's very easy to use and you can get started with these modes. So I, that's why I like the DigiPi. I like it for its ease of use and the way that it makes it so simple for people to get started in using these devices. Um, there's obviously little tweaks and stuff like that that you can do with the DigiPi. Um, one of the cool things about the DigiPi as well, if you load APRS Droid on your phone, you can connect your phone via Bluetooth to the DigiPi and you can get the APRS messages on your phone and you can send and receive APRS uh, packets and track and everything else uh, from your phone with the DigiPi. If you take that into the field, all you need is your radio, the DigiPi, uh, a power source for the Raspberry Pi and your phone and you're doing APRS in the field. Uh, you don't need to take a lot of other stuff. Um, it, it just makes it that much, that simple. The same with F FT8 modes, WSJTX, you can turn that on, it'll start uh, uh, FT8 and you can go in and do that. It has a WinLink email server set up that's for two meters. So you can uh, actually act as a hub and people can send you email directly. The APRS DigiPeter that receives APRS signals coming in and automatically retransmits them. Uh, TNC APRS gate for HF as well as uh, two meters um, is on here as well. Uh, you can also get right to the Linux shell in a web browser, which I think is really cool. You don't have to know how to uh, SSH and it's just the default Raspberry Pi login. Um, you can look at the packet log and other stuff that's on the device right in your web browser. Uh, you don't have to do anything specific to make this work, which uh, again, slow scan TV, uh, you can do a Linux node, which I've played with. It's actually kind of cool. It's like the old bulletin board system. Uh, again, DigiPi, 
excellent for using that old Raspberry Pi you have or a new one and getting starting with digital modes. And if you want something that's just super easy to set up. The KM4 ACK build a pie script, I think, is for people that are a little more experienced and uh, know, have been doing digital modes and know a little bit more to do. Um, it's much more powerful as far as the terms of how many programs and stuff it loads and the types of stuff you can do with it. Um, but again, uh, DigiPie for the ease of use and the use of a web browser. I have a old iPad uh, that I had from work that's like eight or nine years old. Uh, I can't even watch YouTube videos on it because it can't be upgraded. You can't do anything with it, but I can still use it as a web browser for the DigiPie, uh, which is about the only thing it's good for at this point. And I'm still able to use that ancient tablet. So you could buy a super cheap um, Android tablet that has a browser in it and you've basically got your portable setup and because it's wireless your tablet isn't connected to the radio or anything you can move around if you're in a tent or something like that you can move around and still have the tablet in front of you so uh, that's my pitch for the digipi i think it's a great um, device i think it's a great setup um, if you want to get the digipi uh, craig asked that you join his patreon and then he'll give you the password and everything so you can download the digipi image you can do it for a little as a dollar a month that's twelve dollars for the year and you're getting a great software uh, image for the raspberry pi um, i think he's tried it on a bunch of different raspberry pis and including one of the original raspberry pis obviously it's super slow um, i've been using it on a raspberry pi 4 a 3b plus and a regular raspberry 3b and uh, it's been working fine uh, i haven't had any issues with either one of those and uh, yeah uh, it's I haven't had this much excitement about a Raspberry Pi build in a while um, because it's so easy to set up and use and the, the, the way that it's usable through through a browser. Um, I can have, uh, I'm already, I'm connected to two Raspberry Pis right here, two different DigiPies, and you can, you know, as many web browser or windows as you want, you can open up and connect to them. Um, so it just makes it really easy to use and I've really been enjoying it. And uh, I hope you'll check it out. And uh, uh, again, go out to uh, digipi.org. You can get more information. Uh, KM6LYW's uh, YouTube channel is great. He has a lot of videos out there uh, using APRS to send a message through the International Space Station um, and just some of the other features of the DigiPi. And um, I, I, think it's, I think it's great what he's doing. And uh, uh, I hope you'll support him and uh, give DigiPi a try. Raspberry Pis are supposed to be coming back in stock later this year. I think they're saying third quarter uh, inventory should start being normal again. Uh, right now, they're extremely hard to find or you're going to pay very high prices for them. Um, but if you have an old one, definitely check it out. Hey, hope you enjoyed the video. This is Tango Oscar Mike saying 73. Take care.